What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to the next lesson for A Course in Creativity, Sapling Chaosmology. So a uh, bit of deep theory on this one, but I geek out all the time, so <laughs> it's nothing really new. But this particular sense, the sense that we're sinking into today is mercy and compassion. Um, and, you know, grace rolled into that as well. Um, now, I, you know, when I think about how we perceive the world through senses of mercy and compassion, um, and how they tie into forgiveness, it seems pretty obvious the way that they might, right? The way that they might tie into forgiveness. But when we sense the world through mercy, when we sense the world through compassion, what we're actually doing is giving ourselves the grace to feel whatever it is that we're feeling, to work through it, and just to sit with and befriend it, right? To sit with anxiety, to sit with fear, to sit with worry, to sit with, you know, all of these different um, emotions that we might feel at first blush compelled to push away because they don't necessarily feel great, right? But then also the, the flip side of this is that it really allows us to experience a rapturous joy as well because we are befriending the part of us that we might push away in feeling, right? What is, where do you feel joy in your body? Where do you feel that? And how, how does mercy and compassion enliven that for you? How does it illuminate joy for you? And I think it's a common thing that when we're outside of grace, when we're outside of mercy, not just for ourselves, but for others, we can turn to things, coping mechanism th and things like that, like nostalgia, where we look at times past and how amazing they were, which, you know, reflection isn't a bad thing, but we can stay anchored in that place as opposed to being in the present moment and also looking forward with open arms for what's to come. Right, so we can be in, in those places uh, within ourselves, but then that's also how we draw experiences to us because we're seeing through the heart space, we're seeing through the heart in a way that is connected to um, mercy and compassion. And if there's an absence of it, um, we can see that come through in a bunch of different ways. Um, but this is also about absolving yourself of guilt and, and the turn towards more innocence. You know, and, and innocence and boundaries are, they have a complicated relationship, to put it mildly, in my experience at least, where, um, you know, innocence, you have to, turning towards innocence is, is, one, is, is one piece of it. But turning towards innocence in so much that you understand that you were never guilty in the way that you were perhaps holding yourself to uh, or, you know, worthy of blame, like these these ways. And, and it can creep in in, in some of the, the most unassuming ways as well, right? Um, through standards that we adhere to or expectations that we hold for ourselves. And because of that foundation, how we pull others towards us, how we magnetize those experiences towards us that are rooted in a very similar structure and a very similar <clears throat> hierarchical view of you right? It hierarchical, it puts your emotions into a hierarchy and it places you in a hierarchy of worthiness or not worthy in these different aspects. So then you compartmentalize and fragment instead of feeling it all, just feeling it all. Um, and this, this also, it opens up your capacity to see that in others, you know, with, um, and you know, having, having ADHD, I've experienced it where taking medication. Now this is not to malign medication because I am not medication shaming for some people. And some of them are my friends. It has been life altering and life giving for them. So, um, for myself, however, I found it so, it was a strange phenomenon because the, the medication that I had been taking stripped my emotions from me at one point. So when I, you know, I went for a, you know, a check in with the doctor and it was such an odd sensation because I had, there was nothing right The And there's like checking in with yourself on a regular basis to say, what does this feel like? How am I feeling in moments of mindfulness has always been a practice um, coming from the family that I did. It, I turned it into a practice to make sure that I knew how I was feeling and being connected to all of that. But it was such a, a strange, it was so strange. Um, it was very strange. And, you know, then fixing that, going off the medication and finding other ways to manage um, the, the energy flow uh, were, were vital for me. But it was so curious to me, the, the absence of emotion. 
Um, it reminded me of when uh, I took, I was going to the hospital for a cyst on my ovary and um, when I went into cardiac shock because of the morphine, my heart stopped and I could feel it, I could feel it stop. And, and I've talked to another friend who had a separate, she had a different heart condition, but the, there's silence, the silence in the absence of a beating heart. Right, it, you don't realize how noisy your body is. That's something that uh, we had talked about. Like you, your body is extremely noisy, and when your heart stops, you forget how much noise it just makes on a regular base, basis. And emotions and meditation are like this too, where emotionally speaking, you can get into a place where you're just accustomed to the noise, uh, and you confuse emotions for noise. And mercy and compassion here are about pulling, they're about, you know, phoning, it's like phone a friend, right? It's like phone a guide. It's like calling in this beautiful energy of, of recognition and uh, stability. I think about tree roots, you know, where the tree, I, I went for a walk after, um, the the storm that hit where I live. It's called a derecho, uh, or derecho, whichever one. And I found it so, um, it was just so, I, as I was walking through the woods afterwards to just be with the land after it happened, because to me that was healing. Um, and I just, I felt like I needed to be there more. Um, the, the trees in the forest had such a thick root system that very few of them fell. You could see the branches impacted by it, but the trees themselves were still deeply rooted, right? And this is a call for community too and the importance of that. Um, and the trees, I was driving back from my grandmother's house, so my granny's, and the trees lining the sides of the road were some of the worst casualties, even though the, the trunks were thick enough that would indicate uh, 100 plus year old trees. So it's just so interesting, these root systems, right? And I feel like mercy and compassion are these root systems for our heart center. Um, and, and how does that express? How does mercy and compassion express? It is not just looking to the benefit of the doubt, but admitting that you don't know. Staying curious about what something means, about what someone means. Being open to whatever comes your way. Being enthralled at the idea of what could come because you have no idea how good it could get. Mercy and compassion can also look like saying, you know what, I, I, I don't know enough here and I am going to commit to learning more. That's, that's the humility of, of um, when we have allyship behaviors, right? When we are, when we are um, not part of communities that are equity seeking, that are on the margins, right? And how, how is it that we are allowing ourselves the grace to learn? Right? And how are we, as equity-seeking groups, giving others the grace to learn and the permission to make mistakes? Mistakes, right? Learning. Um, you know, and, and I think a lot of people can get to a place of going from two to a hundred with that and saying, no, they have to get it right. The onus is not on, on anyone to educate, which is partially true, but then there's room for mercy and compassion and grace as well for folks who are truly interested in learning, not, not harming. but. Um, I think about the, how that expresses itself in community as well, given my community orientation more. But um, mercy and compassion may also look like how they, they are the, the, the sort of foundational architecture of forgiveness. Because it's a willingness to say that you didn't see everything that you thought you might have. It's sort of like losing your keys in the house, right? Losing your keys in the house, if your keys are your perspective, right? You lose your keys in the house and you are, are forgiving of yourself for having to go do a second take and that they were in the first place that you looked. But you just overlooked them because of all of the things going through your mind. You know, you're, you're late for this or that or whatever. I, but, you know, the, the ways that we can misplace things um, emotionally as well as, um, you know, I want to say intellectually, but I feel like given the amount that uh, we're encouraged to disconnect from our emotions um, in, in just pop culture, I feel like it's really important to, to, to stay in the feeling space. I kind of bumped up against this mercy and compassion this morning um, before recording this video, and I, 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 I'm, I hesitated to put it in here, hence the stammering and stumbling. Um, but mercy and compassion also looks like um, you know, I, I'll just tell the story. So I watched a video by a tarot reader that I, that has had a huge impact, um, on my experience. And I was somewhat disappointed and I don't think that they meant, uh, I, I don't know that they meant any harm by it. 
um, but it was just uh, it was the way that emotions were um, the point being made was uh, as people with Asperger's were likened to plutonic destruction and um, plutonic destruction just meaning versus twin flame so binarizing you know twin flame or not um, and uh, it was a little bit uh, saddening I think uh, to see it and again I don't know what they meant uh, but I know that my brother has Asperger's and um, myself expressing neurodivergence albeit differently but also having friends one of my best friends um, is also he has Asperger's as well um, and I just, you know, mercy and compassion look like admitting that we don't know what someone meant, right? But I did, I wanted to put it in here not to um, slam anyone or anything like that because I feel like that's not productive and it doesn't honor your heart space. It doesn't honor who you are or who they are, right? It doesn't honor that. And it creates an, another other, right? From, from a narrative that was already creating that. So I'm putting this in here also, I think, uh, I recognize the energetics of of harmful narratives um where you know when when we look at the linguistic repair of uh watching vocabulary and things like that some people are very quick to say like snowflakes and things like that about um being more careful with language but i just see that there's been this legacy of harm there's been a legacy of harm done and so you know i think it's just a a matter of of uh good practice and, and heart-centered practice to be willing to let in um, the the possibilities that come from uh, absolve from from uh, parting with the stereotypes or um, ways that we might have seen things in the past so a practice of mercy and compassion in real time for me took place this morning but also uh, just putting this out there as well uh, because I feel like one of the beautiful parts about July or June sorry <laughs> June and Pride Month for me have always been the expansion of joy right just the absolute beauty that that emanates from the community from my my beloved 2s lgbtq plus community um that it, what radiates from it is is just oh, it's a kind of perfection that is divine for sure and i just felt it important to address this because there are also neurodivergent people who are part of that and um i wanted to uh, really address this to to say that folks who may be on autism spectrums um, and folks who may be, uh, you know, having labels like Asperger's laid upon them uh, are not, uh, they do not lack feeling. They do not lack the, the agency to articulate how they feel. Uh, I've experienced it where my friends who have Asperger's or who are on the autism spectrum are deeply feeling. They are more connected to their feelings than we might understand. Uh, and to limit their expression of that through a very narrow neurotypical lens is to not only engage in discriminatory acts, but it is also to limit the possibilities for their multidimensionality to thrive in a system that may not have been designed that way. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, do we want to lend our words and our energy to that, and that thread of harm, that narrative thread of and discursive harm done? Or do we want to lay the bricks of mercy and compassion along the road so that in our, our ability to navigate neurotypical systems, uh, as a neurodivergent person, this isn't this is my offering. I, I'm not neurotypical, but do we want to lay bricks that might help others tread that path easily? Because I know that in the ways that I am part of norms in the world, I would much rather lay bricks that that lend mercy and compassion, not because I hope that someone else will do it for me, but because I hope and I I, I hope that life is easier for others. Than, than it might be and not easier because we focus on the lack and the harm but easier because we focus on the light and that's what we're shining so that that shines much brighter and that that illuminates the path that makes the way the cat's coming to join us so again i don't know why this particular teacher made that assertion i can't speak on their behalf and i'm not going to stir drama uh, of any kind by saying go there and say this no it's not that doesn't help a single thing um, this for me is about focusing on um, you know highlighting that there are ways that we all show up different there are ways that we all show up 
abnormal <laughs> or you know as as many people have used labels to define my community queer a little queer compared to everyone else hence the reclamation of the term and why i use it personally because it encompasses much and says so much more um, so for all of the ways that you might be different don't assume that because there are stereotypes that would flatten you or because there exist people who do not understand the way that you show up in the world that does not mean for one second that you do not deserve to be here or that you have labels that are you are beholden to like destructive destructor plutonic right these are not labels that belong to you be easy with yourself and where you invest your energy because those 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 become part of you because at a subconscious level you hear it and you may respond to it as a reinforcement of your difference. But I feel that the best way that we can come together is by recognizing the difference in a way that opens the space, that, that allows our capacity for one another to expand mercy and compassion. This is how we reach that level of forgiveness, not as though we're reaching for it up here, but because we're reaching across and seeing it in one another. And I'll just put two books up on the screen for folks who, um, you know, if you're looking for a deeper dive into, um, you know, this, there's something that an author called Erin Manning, uh, she wrote a book called um, or I, I'm not sure if they've updated their pronouns, so I'll say Aaron Manning. Uh, and Aaron wrote a book uh, called The Minor Gesture, which talks about autistic perception as being a feeling perception that runs much deeper than what neurotypicality uh, might assume of it. Um, so I'll put that here. I know that this isn't really an autism or autistic, uh, you know, observance month per se, but I just felt compelled. Um, you know, and given the thread of mercy and compassion and, and what I, I kind of was faced with today and just sitting with the feeling of discomfort, you know, and I think the other thing too is that when we put teachers even on pedestals, we can assume that they have so much more than us, that we can assume that they know so much more than us and that can then cause us to reject them. That can then cause us to reject them uh, even if they've been super helpful in other ways because we singularize their existence to the offering that they put into the world which is a really unfair perfection to demand of anyone so this is not to malign that person and again i'm not sharing their name because of that exact reason another good book that if you're if you're looking for a dive into uh you know the the idea of autistic agency and uh declaratives and the ways that uh, autistic folks can show up for themselves as um both deeply immersed in rhetoric um and also the ways that they express themselves around it i'll put that book here which is called authoring autism um both excellent books um i tend to be a bit of a theory nerd so that that's my jam but uh, if you are interested in those books i would highly recommend them this is i think mercy and compassion equally as as much as we apply it or hope that it is applied to us we have to give that to other people we have to give that to other people because we aren't perfect either there was a clark kegley quote that he talked about this and i wrote it down because i wanted the it was such a concise reminder of the role of mercy and compassion not just in our interpersonal interactions but our collective expectations and how we build those interactions around it and honestly i would argue that autistic folks are more connected to 5d than than the rest of us um, the friends that I have are their existence defies the norms that 3d might hold down for others and um, I think that it's such a, 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 a beautiful way those the friends that I have that are either on the autism spectrum in the Asperger sense or in other ways um, they've taught me so much they've taught me so much about connection and feeling and the ways that feelings can be expressed, you know, when I start programs at uh, at my job with with littles, with kids, I often ask them, you know, I need you to listen with your eyes and your ears. I don't need you to listen with your hands yet, but you might be have the opportunity to as we get further along. And you know, those making those differentiations. This isn't to uphold myself as a model, but to say that there are ways that people take in the world that are so vastly different, and that does not make them less than. It does not make them any any kind of, of any kind of destructive force.
um, just because it doesn't fit. So just have mercy and compassion with yourself as well. Not to kind of quote an Uncle Jesse thing, <laughs> have mercy. But I mean, do, do have mercy. <laughs> but um, I, so if you are looking for resources on emotions and feeling and um, things along those lines, I've, I've um, recommended these books to friends and um, I've read them, you know, I would say about six to 10 years ago now, some of them, but, um, or almost. Uh, one of them is here, Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. Um, that one was really powerful uh, and came highly recommended. And then I've been able to pass that on to others. And another great resource in terms of connecting with emotions is this book, Emotional Intimacy by Robert Augustus Masters. Um, his whole library of books is, is phenomenal. Uh, but, uh, you know, don't forget, don't forget to write yourself into mercy and compassion, my friends, and understand that your innocence is not to the extent, it is not something that can be granted uh, based on how other people view you or the ways that other people approve of you. Your innocence is inherent to you. It is inherent to you. You did not come here bad, my darlings. You just didn't. You just didn't. And there's something so abundant about remembering that. There's something so joyful about being in that vibration because it's one of possibility, right? It's one of possibility because it, it's, it's no longer wrought with fixing anything. It's just everything is. And from that place, who someone actually is, who they are, can shine through. And I think that's the world that we, we need to be moving more towards, right? So, um, but that is your lesson for today. Uh, if this resonated, please like and subscribe. I would love to have you on the channel. Uh, and thank you so much for, for those who are joining me here from uh, you know, the existing subscriber base. So thank you so much for that. Uh, and if this is where we part though, wherever this finds you on the time-space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, I hope that it finds you very well, my friends. Take care.